Hello everyone, Bob the Chemist here, and I want to do a video here on propagation of uncertainty. And we're going to talk about what this is, how we do it, why we care, and uh, if you are coming here looking for the calculus way to do it, you're going to need to find another video. What we are doing here is using an algebraic approach, which doesn't require calculus and covers just basic, uh, basic approaches to error propagation. So first, let's consider something. If we have a class of 30 students who are trying to determine the density of an aqueous solution, they're going to have some uh, some glassware and some tools uh, available to them. One might be a graduated cylinder that has a, uh, a 1 milliliter graduation and 0.1 milliliter precision because of the uh, the way the gradation is, the graduation is. And we've got a balance, uh, an analytical balance. Let's pretend that this analytical balance has broken draft shield, and so there's lots of uh, noise due to the wind and movement of uh, of people in the lab so we've only got about 0.1 gram precision on this uh, on this balance so the first thing that happens is the students all have to measure the uh, the mass of their empty graduated cylinder and most of them are going to get around 15.0 grams but not everyone does because of that wind and because of the uh, random errors that are associated with the measurement some people get a small value around 14.8 others get higher values most of them do get around 15. You'll see well over uh, half of the students get 15. And the average is 15.00 plus or minus 0.11. Now, uh, you'll notice that I'm using two decimal places or two sig figs in my standard deviation. And that's because I'm going to use these numbers for calculations later on. If I'm reporting this as a final answer, I'm only reporting to one, uh, one sig fig. But we'll come back to that later. So now that we've got the mass of the, uh, the empty graduated cylinder, we've got to fill it. Students are told to measure out about 31 milliliters and record the volume as precisely as possible. Now they're uh, going to get a variety of numbers. Again, if we see uh, and, and summarize the distribution in a histogram, we're going to see that some values are low, some values are high, but the average is going to be around 30.94 uh, um, uh, milliliters in this particular case, plus or minus 0.48 for the standard, uh, standard deviation. Excellent. Last, we're going to take this uh, filled graduated cylinder and measure its mass one more time. We get the uh, uh, same type of situation where there's a variety of responses because we've got 30 students all doing slightly different experiments or slightly different measurements. There's random error in here, and we get an average of around 49.10 plus or minus 0.11 uh, milliliters. Okay, so there's our, uh, our data, and students then crunch those numbers to figure out the density of this aqueous solution by taking the filled mass, subtracting from it the empty mass, and dividing by the volume. If we look at all 30 students' data, we see that there's a variety of uh, answers. A lot of them center around 1.11 uh, grams per milliliter. Again, if we do a histogram here, we see that some of them have low values of around 1.4, and some of them uh, 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 might up get uh, get up pretty, uh, uh, pretty high. And so the uh, uh, the question then is how can we figure out this average and standard deviation if the average uh, density is 1.102 and the average and the standard deviation is 0.018 grams per milliliter? Is it possible to get that from the means and the standard deviations that we calculated for each individual measurement? Obviously, the answer is yes, uh, but let's see uh, what, how it actually works out. To calculate the average, uh, if I just take the average of the two masses and divide, subtract those and then divide that by the average of the, uh, the volume, I do get 1.102. So the average checks out. That's, uh, that's not too difficult. But if I try to do the same thing with the standard deviations by just uh, plugging them into the, the density equation that I'm using, I see that I get a number that's close, but it's not the, uh, the right value. It's actually a little bit, uh, a little bit larger. And uh, if we're analytical chemists, we care about that. So we want to have a, uh, uh, we want to figure out the right way to to do this. And it turns out that there are uh, uh, that there are equations that we can use. Uh, so this does once we understand these equations, it turns out to just be plug and chug. And we need to understand 
that there are two different situations, one when we're adding and subtracting, and one when we're multiplying and supplying, uh, multiplying and dividing. If you're following along in this video in one of my classes, then you should probably pause the video at this point and write those equations down. Even if you're not in my class, it might be a good idea to help you remember them, uh, but we are going to have access to those in the next couple slides. I do want to mention that the U here stands for uncertainty. It can be a standard deviation, it could be a tolerance, but uh, uh, for general terms we're just going to use U. R stands for results, so the value that we're actually determining, and then A and B are the variables that are being uh, used in the, uh, uh, in the addition, subtraction, multiplying, or dividing. Okay, let's take a look at the numerator first, because uh, if we've got in our equation both addition and su or subtraction and division, we're going to need to break it up. So we'll start off with the numerator where we do a, a, a subtraction of the two masses. And we grab those two numbers and we're going to need to use the uh, first equation that I provided, uh, which is the square root of the sum of the squares of the uncertainties. So we're going to take our standard deviations for the two masses, we're going to square them, we're going to add them, and we're going to take the square root again. Go ahead and pause the video, give that a shot. I'm going to give you the answers in just a second. And there we go. We've got UA is 0.11, UB is 0.10, that's directly from the table. The result then should be 0.15, I'm sorry, the uncertainty, the result is 0.15, and our results, uh, which you'll see we need in the next slide, is 34.10, which is really just a subtraction, the difference of the two masses, the filled GC, filled graduated cylinder, and the empty uh, empty graduated cylinder. Uh, you'll note in, these, uh, in this uh, simple experiment or simple experiment, example, we've only got two variables, and so we've got an A and a B. If you needed more, if you have uh, um, multiple things that you're adding and subtracting, you can just daisy chain on uh, a C, an uncertainty in D, and it would just keep, the equation would keep on going. These would just be underneath that square root term, term and uh, you put in as many as you, uh, you need. Okay, let's finish it off. If we've got a density now, which is a mass over a volume, that's a division, and a multiplication or division require that we use the same, uh, or this equation here. Notice that we do need the results, so that means we need the density, the, uh, the value for r, and then we need our uncertainties for the two, uh, uh, the two values that we're dividing, and the actual values themselves, the a's and the b's. Uh, so that's why uh, uh, you know we have uh, why we calculated the, uh, the the difference in the mass from the previous one. So let's see what we've uh, uh, what we've got here. The result is going to be just the two numbers like we would usually calculate a, a density. So the mass in the numerator, the volume in the denominator, and we get that 1.102. Great. So that number then goes down into the bottom equation, and we continue to plug and chug with our uncertainties and the uh, uh, the values. If you take an, if you notice here, the values under the square root symbols are the relative uncertainties. So it is the uncertainty divided by the the average value for each case. Again, plug and chug, and now we see that we get 0 0.018, which is the value that we expected, uh, that we got from uh, uh, from taking the average and standard deviation of all the uh, the class data. So what this essentially means is uh, propagation of uncertainty is a way to figure out the uncertainty of a calculated result if we've got measured values that also have uncertainty. We need to use two special equations depending on the math that we're doing. If we're doing addition or subtraction, we use that equation on the left. If we're using the um, addition or multiplication or division, then it's the equation on the right. More advanced uh, approaches are going to require some calculus. In my types of classes, it's not going to happen. If you are uh, uh, visiting from uh, other places on the on the interweb, then you might need to check another video where you use calculus to figure these to, these types of things out. And lastly, why do we really care about this? Uh, when we are in a laboratory, we are making measurements. They rarely uh, give us the final answer, and we have to perform some sort of mathematical operations, but if we're doing that with multiple measurements that have uncertainty, we need to get a good estimate of the uncertainty in our, uh, our, our final measurements, our final results, in order to make honest assessments of the accuracy and precision of our, of our experiments. 
that's all for me for now. Thanks for watching.